that slavery, or oh, white supremacy, was primarily an economic system to benefit whites and exploit blacks. Each needs to learn how to see the contradictions in their behaviour and statements. So that leads us on to chapter one, and we've not even started. That's just the preamble, as it were, leading into the actual text. And that's what he's dealing with. He's going, he's going bits, isn't he? I don't even think we're going to get that much time to go through this, so we only got two minutes. So I'm just going to end this broadcast, as it were, early to borrow that term from Blackberry. But we finally got to chapter one, where he talks about how female values were more conservative and trying to preserve the few privileges, how females weren't really seen as a threat. Whereas for men, they had to really ask themselves serious questions of manhood and values, priorities, what's important to them. He quotes Stephen Berman, a book with certain people, where it says the woman learned the manners of the southern gentlefolk, and they learned how to behave, talk, and think like members of the southern white aristocracy. He also quotes Michelle Wallace in Black Macho and the Myth of the Superwoman, which Tommy Curry lambas so many times. She says, the extent to which the black female slave became unable to distinguish her reality from the white view of that reality. So that's just a beautiful quote, which I think is just alone there, which can be, just can be taken as it were. She can don't she can't distinguish between her reality and the whites. And I think this really sets the tone for so much of what gets said in the book. Also these Igmo and Mito stuff which people seem to endorse at some point or in some way. Also quotes Paula Giddings, when and where I enter. And again, Black Macho. So I'm, I'm just trying to find a way to end this and where I should end this out. Because a lot comes out of this. Oh, E. Frank and Fleurasia, of course, is here. He may says, how servants were, of course, the stars of the party. All eyes turned to them to see how they conducted. That speaks about their patterns of politeness and gentility. And how these were somewhat greatly envied or bitterly hated. I think this is the foundations for this female contempt for males. Not this gender war. This black female contempt for males, at least. That's how I frame it. I know it's been a bit subdued. Maybe it's the fact that I'm really going to be missing this place. But thank you for listening. And that's an introduction to this most excellent text, which... Maybe in the coming weeks, in a very different setting, we're going to be able to unpack.